have to be so real right now. Well, we're gonna get deep here. What? Hello, book besties. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Delaney. If you are new here, we are back with another weekly reading vlog. And this one is super fun because Instagram is going to be blindly choosing my reads for the week. So it's kind of out of my hands. You guys are going to be deciding what I read for this entire week. So basically for this, I'm going to be posting a photo of two books every time that I put a poll up on my Instagram story. And I'm going to be coloring out the covers of the books. So you can't tell what they are, describing them with some emojis. And then you guys are going to vote for which book you want me to read based solely on the emojis. If that doesn't make sense, it'll make more sense as we go through. So I posted the first poll last night and we're gonna go check the results together right now. Before we check the results though, I wanna tell you what emojis I chose. So the first book had like the little twin dancer best friend emoji, a bus emoji, a hammer emoji, and a pink heart emoji. Then the next book had like the shush secret emoji, again a friendship emoji a pink heart and then like the tears of joy like sweet heartfelt emoji admittedly my emoji choices were a little bit weak but i typed in the keywords that i was looking for to describe the books and then i clicked the emoji that came up with them it's not my fault that some of the emojis suck okay it like i did my best i did my best as i described the books you're gonna be like girl what the heck was that emoji choice I, I'm sorry, I, I tried. So the first book I described with the friend emoji, the bust, the hammer, and the beating pink heart is Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. This is the second book. A, the first one is Next of Kin. I don't know entirely what the series is like technically called, but it's an interconnected standalone series. And this is the second one. And this is a friends to lovers romance while they are renovating a school bus into a home. So do you kind of see the emojis there? It was like the friendship was the little twin dancer bunny looking thing. And then a bus, they don't have a school bus emoji, which I think is just outrageous. So there's just a big yellow bus and then a hammer because they're renovating it. And then a pink heart because it's romance. I don't know, it sucks you guys, I know, I know. Then the next one was a secret emoji, another friend emoji, a heart, and then like the joyful teary eyed smiley face. And that is just last night. So this is a romance and the back said that it explores lifelong friendships, long buried secrets and unexpected love in a heartfelt emotional novel. So the long buried secrets was a little shush emoji. The lifelong friendships was the little dancers. <laughs> I don't know why there's not a better emoji for friends, but if you type in friends, that's what comes up. It's like different variations of the little bunny eared ballerinas. I don't know why. And then the heart because it is unexpected love. And then the little teary eyed joyful emoji because it said it was a heartfelt emotional novel. Do you see the vibes? Do you see what I was going for? The execution could have been a little better, but you see what I was going for? Okay, but now it's time to check the poll. So we're pulling it up. The winner is Just Last Night. It won by 5%. 55% said this one, 45% said the other one, and that is a difference of like over 100 votes. So that is pretty significant, honestly. Over 100 people more said this one. I'm really excited for this because I think I've heard that this is like a really good depiction of grief. Um, Honestly, you couldn't have gone wrong with either of these books. I love Hannah Bonham Young, so I was excited to read that, but I'm really excited to read this because I've heard Destiny Sidwell talk about it, and I've also heard Haley Pham talk about it. So I'm excited to see what it's all about, and I will be diving into this this week. It is officially the first book in this weekly reading vlog, so I wanted to hop on, introduce the vlog, introduce the concept, and pick our first book together. I will hopefully dive into this later today, and I will update you whenever I have an update regarding the book. But that is all for now. Like I said, I will update you when I have something more to say. And I'm excited to get started reading this. And thank you to anyone who follows me on Instagram and participates in my random chaotic polls that I always am putting up on my Instagram stories. I really do appreciate you. So thank you to anyone who participated in this and voted in this poll. Hopefully you voted for this one and we're going to see how it turns out. I will talk to you shortly. Hello, book besties. It is a lot of days later. It is what? I think I started this video Monday and it's now Saturday. So we're going to mark now as like the start of actually reading for the week. I know you picked the first book a long time ago, but life has been so crazy. A friend came into town. I've been 
doing a lot of family stuff, lots of social events going on, lots of work things going on, and I haven't had a chance to read like at all. So we're just going to scrap kind of that past week and just get a head start now because the book is already picked and we're going to start like the week of reading now. I know kind of broke the rules a little bit, but last week was just so chaotic that no reading got done. So we are starting now and I'm in the middle of just last night and I actually started I did start reading this book last week, but I read the first chapter four or five times. And it was like, I'm not not enjoying it. But every time I would read the first chapter, I was like, what? Like, what is going on? I don't know why it wasn't like, do you know when you read with your eyes and not really with your brain, like you're reading the words and nothing's sinking in at all. That's exactly what was going on. And I was like, what am I doing here? Like, I need to just put the book down. I'm not in the headspace to read. So we put it away for a couple days and we are back now. So like I said, it's Saturday. I really had nothing going on today. So I just was able to read for a good chunk this morning and I read 120 pages. I'm about to start chapter 14. And my biggest takeaway right now is like the way that grief is conveyed in this book is so honest and so beautiful and so relatable. And this book in particular, like down to the details of the tragic incident is so relatable for me and what I went through earlier this year like it's kind of blowing my mind how closely connected it is and so it's hitting extra hard because not only is it like the grief elements but like literally the details of the event is like so relatable for me um it's really hitting close to home like that and I think just like the themes of friendship and relationship and grief is really the most prominent thing. I went into this thinking it was a romance and I'm not sure that it is at this point. Oh yeah it is. I wonder who... I think I know who but there's like no romance going on right now. It is just like fully grief in this friend group, in this friend circle and it's beautifully written so far. Like there are so many moments that I'm like wow like that hits hard. Like even just the simple things. It's like, if there's something I'm sure of, it's that I will never think I had enough time with her. Like, yes. And when you lose someone unexpectedly, especially, it's like you can't even prepare for the devastation that's about to hit you. Yeah. And she talks about like going on and like they have to figure out what to have for like dinner. And she's like, mm, six o'clock, who's for takeaway? Or I think that there's leftover chicken in the fridge. It feels so flippant and like you're drawing a line as if it's already diminishing in importance if you can think about your appetite or picking one food over another. Where like when you start to like function in life, like things have to go on. It's like, how? Or like you see the sunrise and you're like, what do you mean the world like didn't just end? And that sounds dramatic unless you've lost someone. Do you know what I mean? I think anyone that's lost someone close to them understands. Like you see people laughing or you go on social media and you see people like posting their highlight reels and you're like, what the heck? Like my life feels like it just ended and now I have to figure out what to eat for dinner. Like that doesn't feel fair. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. This is beautifully written. I'm like wanting to go back through and highlight and annotate. I'm like marking the pages, just taking pictures of them. And I think I'm going to go through and annotate this book. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like an annotation book. I think sometimes it takes a little while to figure out if it's like I'm committing or not, but I've been taking pictures of the pages that are really sticking out and I think I'm going to go annotate because like it's really beautiful. Very powerful so far. I'm only like probably 30% in, um, but so far so good. So really, really great choice picking this book. I think I needed to read this right now with the holidays coming up. I feel like grief is sitting a little heavier on me. Um, and I don't want to get emotional talking about it, but I feel like reading about something, even fictional, just like kind of makes you feel less alone, which is really helpful. Um, so yeah, you guys picked really good. Thanks for picking this book. That is the update as of now. I am going to go do a couple house things, probably read a little bit more tonight is my hope. I don't entirely know. It's a Saturday night and I have no plans, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we will see where the day takes us and I will definitely update you though if I have a bookish update for you. Hello, it is time that we talk because I have an update. I finished just last night, finally finished just last night. I feel like this book took me so much longer than I expected. It's not an overly long book. It's under 400 pages and I feel like it took me 
so long to work my way through this book and I just like I don't know I don't know how to put this into words I feel like this book was a mix of like incredibly relatable hard-hitting one-liners about grief and loss and just like the emotional impacts of that where I was like oh my gosh I've never felt so seen by anything and then padding that surrounding those like one-liners was a lot of boredom for me I was bored I was really really bored reading this I will say what ended up being the romance in this book was not the romance I predicted and I actually liked that because I wasn't rooting for the romance that I thought was going to happen so I was glad that that wasn't like the forefront of the romance element of this book but I feel like the romance as a whole was kind of lacking I feel like there was I don't know I just didn't feel passionately about the romance I honestly didn't feel passionately about any of the characters any of the plot it just like fell a little flat for me. Maybe my expectations were too high. I fully admit my expectations were pretty high going into this book because I had heard phenomenal things about it, particularly in like the ways it talks about grief. I will say it lived up to the expectation for grief quotes and like grief depiction. I think it did a great job depicting grief, but the book as a whole bored me. And I also think there was like some sort of, a little bit of like a cultural disconnect because there's a lot of like British terms and British humor that just like I didn't either understand or I just didn't care like it just didn't feel relevant just because there was like a lack of understanding there kind of like a disconnect so I feel like that played a part in it as well I don't know I just didn't feel connected to the story or the characters I settled on giving this a three star rating which is not what I expected I thought this could have been a five star read it was like a 4.5 to 5 star prediction in my brain like that's kind of what I went in expecting which maybe it's my own fault that I feel like it fell flat because I went in with high expectations but I just felt a little bit bored a little bit let down so that's where I'm going to leave it for this one we did it we read it this is actually the book that I wanted to win that first poll I had very high hopes it just didn't fully do what I wanted it to do and that's okay it happens However, last night I posted the second poll. So I wanted to jump into more of the thriller genre. So I posted the second poll last night. And the first book that I posted with emojis was the girl emoji, the like peeping eye emoji, you know what I'm talking about? And like the smiling devilish, like little devil horn emoji. And the other book is a bride emoji, a knife emoji, and like a dripping blood emoji. And I asked you guys to pick. So the first book that I described, The Little Kid, The Peeping Emoji, and The Devil Emoji, is A Welcome Reunion by Lucinda Berry. And this is about a girl who comes back after being sent away, I think, to like a group home? No, that's not at all the plot. I read a Lucinda Berry book in my last vlog and I want to like read more of her stuff because it was really easy to read. It's a thriller about a couple faced with the terrifying return of a girl they once called their own who threatens everything they hold dear. It says Janie is the last person Hannah and Christopher want to see again but Janie's moved back to Clarksville. She's no longer the frail child Hannah and Christopher adopted over 11 years ago, the child who destroyed their lives. Now Janie is out of juvenile detention, a beautiful confident young adult and publicly promoting her all her new tell-all memoir. So this young child that like ruined their life is back years later as an adult coming back into their life. So I feel like I did a decent job picking the emojis for that one. And then the other book I think you guys can guess is The Housemaid's Wedding. So obviously the wedding emoji is the bride emoji and then it says like someone's out to kill her. So that was the knife and the blood emoji. So the winner of this poll by 6% is The Housemaid's Wedding. So I'm very excited to read this. It will be very, very quick. I know it's going to be a quick read. It is like 80 pages, I think. So I'm thinking I can read this in like an hour or so and just kind of crank it out. Um, super duper short read, but I did want to read it with you guys because I feel like The Housemaid is such a popular series and I honestly feel like we're milking the series a little bit. Like the books just keep coming and I feel like they could have stopped after book two, but we will see what I think of this. Maybe it'll be great. Maybe it'll be great. I think a short 
story novella style might be okay. Do you know what I mean? I feel like we're kind of beating a dead horse. That is the worst thing ever, but I feel like we're kind of beating a dead horse with the Housemaid series. So another full length book, I think I wouldn't be able to do, but since it's a novella, I'm open to reading it. I'm excited to read it actually. And I feel like I will read it very quickly. So I will keep you posted. I'll probably fly through that today or tonight. And then I will update you when I have an update when I finish that book. All right, stay with me for a while. Let's chat because we have to be so real right now. The Housemaid books have got to stop. They've got to stop. I really do enjoy Frida McFadden's books. Her writing's not the most mature. It's not the most impactful or meaningful, but her thrillers are fast paced. They are twisted. They are engaging. They give what I want from a thriller. But the Housemaid series has got to end. At this point, it feels like a money grab. Like she's built a following for the Housemaid series and she's just trying to capitalize on it. Like I understand that and like obviously get your bag, Frida. Like I understand. But also like how many times are we going to keep revisiting and having the same plot but like not, I don't even know. Like ugh. this novella took me 40 minutes to read and I still feel like I wasted time by doing so. It literally is like less than 24 hours, the entire book. And it's Millie's wedding day. And she keeps getting like a phone call that someone's going to kill her. And she's basically running around trying to prepare for her wedding day and scared that someone's out to get her. And the 15 seconds that I just told you what the book is about is the entire book. Like the ending wasn't shocking. There was no exciting conclusion. I was not scared at all. I was not engaged. I was not invested. And like, I know a novella doesn't often have the same power to hold the complexity that a normal length book does. And I wasn't even ex expecting that. Like I went in with low novella level expectations and still, like, we have to stop with the Housemaid series. It's time. It's time. I gave this a two star. I don't really recommend you read it. I mean, if it's really, really something that you're dying to know about, it's very quick. I think you could read it in under an hour. But it did nothing. I'm not glad I read it. It changed nothing for me. It's not something I will be thinking about ever again. I honestly felt similarly about the entire third Housemaid book. The Housemaid is good and then The Housemaid's Secret was decent. The Housemaid is watching I did not enjoy and this novella now like I just it feels like we've done everything that we need to do with this series and it feels like it's over. Well that's my thoughts. I'm done being negative. I'm done being grumpy about that. I I don't even know. I'm not resentful. I'm not grumpy. I'm a little bit grumpy about it. I'm not gonna lie. I just feel like at this point it's it feels very similar to Colleen Hoover books when she would like publish the same book and call it a series but she wrote the exact same plot just from the alternate perspective and it's like you're reading the same thing over and over again. Kind of has a similar vibe where it's like okay you're just trying to like get more money out of people by cranking out books that you know will be read because it already established a following and by doing so it feels like you're almost tainting the housemaid which I really enjoyed the housemaid and now it feels like you should have just left it like leave good enough alone is the saying right like you should have just left it you could have left it as one book honestly those are my opinions that's my hot take but I'm done now I'm done ranting we're going into book three I just posted the poll for book three this morning but since I want to start reading, I should have posted it a little bit earlier so it would have the full 24 hours, but we're gonna go check it. And if it's clear enough which book is going to win, then I think I'm gonna start reading today. Oh, for sure. So I posted two books. The first book is the talking emoji, the night moon emoji, the bandaged heart emoji, and then the repeat signal emoji. And then the other book is a red X emoji, a wedding ring emoji, a wine glass emoji, and a pink heart emoji. So that first book, the talking emoji, the moon emoji, the bandaged heart, and the repeat emoji is talking
talking at night. This has been on my TBR for quite a few months now and I know for a fact I will not be reading the physical copy of this book. This is going to be an audiobook only copy for me because it has no quotation marks around the talking. It is like Normal People, I think, by Sally Rooney. I couldn't read that one either because there's no quotation marks when people are talking. Like the dialogue is not separated from the regular text whatsoever. And that bothers me. It bothers me so bad. However, the book does sound really, really good. It says it's about Will and Rosie, two opposites attract in every way, yet they fall for each other as teenagers. So it sounds like they have this really great connection. And it says, until one day, tragedy strikes and any possibility of being together seems to shatter. But time and again, Rosie and Will find their way back to one another. Though the years pass, they cannot quite let go of what might have been. So obviously the talking emoji and the moon emoji was like for the title, Talking at Night. And then the bandaged heart was for like the tragedy that strikes apparently. And the repeat emoji is because it's like a second chance. They keep finding themselves back together over and over again. Then the other book, The Red X, The Wedding Ring, The Wine, and The Heart, is The X Vows. And I don't own the physical copy of this book, but I've been wanting to read it for so long. Basically, it is two exes that are brought back together for a mutual friend's wedding, and they end up traveling through Napa Valley together, and really, like, their connection starts to prove to still be very much so alive. So the X emoji is obviously because they're exes, the wedding ring, because they're brought together for a wedding, the wine emoji, because Napa Valley, and the heart emoji, because it's a second chance romance. And it seems like a romance romance, less of like a tragedy romance. As of now, the poll has been up for five hours and it is 62% the X vows. So I feel pretty safe to assume that the X vows is going to win. So I will probably be starting that book later today. I'm looking for something to read. I feel like I want, I'm in like a reading mood. So I wanted to give the poll the full 24 hours, but honestly, I'm just excited to get reading. So I'll probably jump into that and then I will keep you posted as I'm reading that. Lighting is terrible. I'm like fully side lit. Oops. But that's all. Thanks for listening to my rant on the Housemaid series. I promise I'm not always this negative. I feel like both the books so far in this video have not been the best. So hopefully the X vows will save us. I've heard really great things. It gets good reviews on Goodreads too. So my hopes are high, but realistically high this time. I'm not going in with super high expectations because I don't want to be disappointed again. I can't take another disappointment. That is all as of now. I will talk to you guys soon. Hello. So I am back with a rather large update because I'm the worst and I forgot to update at all over the Thanksgiving holiday. I read a lot of the X-Vows. I'm almost done with the X-Vows. I'm about to finish it right now. And I'm loving this. I'm really loving it. I think that this book does a very, very, very good job of accurately portraying the tension that would occur if you were stuck in close proximity working alongside your ex. I feel like the sometimes second chance romances can be a little bit unrealistic, I think. And I feel like this one is really honest and like really real with like how that situation would feel. I also really love the side characters in this book and I love our female main character. I've seen so many reviews saying she's like whiny or negative or kind of like a pick me girl. Like I've seen so many negative comments about her, but I hate to say it. I kind of relate to her. So like maybe I'm just all those things too, but I relate so much to like, I live life by a list. I have to be organized. Unpredictability scares me. I feel like, well, we're going to get deep here. I feel like I'm always the one that like is kind of plucked out of the social setting and like it doesn't really matter a little bit replaceable like all the things she's expressing like I'm connecting to her so deeply and I love her I also do really love the male main character too anytime I hear a man is in therapy I'm like thank you lord like I automatically like him a little bit more because the self-awareness that he is gaining through his therapy process as you're seeing in this book it's top tier it's amazing I just got to the part with the rings if you know you know and there was like the 212 at the bottom of the note if you know you know and she's just now kind of discovering the rings and that situation I'm not going to say anything more um yeah I'm excited to go finish this I'm actually gonna run and read really really quickly and finish this book right now and I will update you like soon 
in a couple chapters when I finish this. Okay, the time has come. I finished The X Vows and I am giving it a four star. I really liked that book. I really liked that. This is a book where I feel like if I had the physical copy, I would have annotated it. I really connected honestly to both the main characters there at the end. Like some of the things he was saying as well, I was like, yeah, I'm into that. So I can't remember if I even gave the premise of this, but they have a mutual friend who's having a wedding. Things kind of just start falling apart around the wedding planning. And so the two main characters take on some of the wedding planning and basically go on this adventure together kind of like a little mini think of it like a little mini road trip kind of to take care of like the cake and some of the planning and those types of things and so they are like forced to work together and naturally they have to confront their history throughout this time it is so good it was so good I really really enjoyed that I really liked you with a view by Jessica Joyce by the same author and I think I like this one even more. This was really, really, really good. Finally, I feel like we have a winner from this vlog. This vlog was a little bit disappointing. I'm so sorry. But you know, not every book can be a four or five star. So we had Just Last Night, which was a three star for me. I was a little bit bored. We had The Housemaid's Wedding, which was a two star for me, just because I got so frustrated that we're still like wringing out the last tiny drops that we can of the Housemaid series. When we should have just let it rest anyways i digress i will not get on that rant again and now we have my favorite book of the reading vlog the x vows this was really great four stars but that is all i feel like this video has been going on forever because when i initially started it to when i actually started reading was such a long time so i'm excited to finally like conclude this and hopefully get it up for you guys soon i'm sorry it took me so long to film this i guess it doesn't matter to you because you didn't even know it was really in process but thank you to everyone who voted on my instagram polls thank you to you guys for hanging out with me through this week of reading i appreciate you i'm so glad you're here make sure you're subscribed as well so you don't miss any future videos and follow me on instagram tiktok all the things they're always linked down below so you don't miss anything else from me but that is all for today's video and i will catch you in the next one bye with besties